Hi everyone, Jeremy here from Flatware Creations. I am going live tonight. I just got an order for a uh, double fork heart necklace. So I figured I would just hop on and go live and show you guys how I make these and uh, just hang out for a little bit. Let me see something in the chat. Oh, 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 kitty. Um, so I'm going to get right into this so we can keep it kind of short. You're going to need two jump rings. These are 10 millimeter. You don't have to go that big, but I just have those so they have enough adjustment to travel and do whatever it needs to do. You're going to need two preferably matched forks. For me, they need to be matched, my OCD. Hi, random penguin. So we have two forks here. Um, they both have this rounded top. So some of the forks are squared off. Do, 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 do. I can't find a fork. Oh, wait. Here's a fork. So you can kind of see how this is squared off. It has the corners up here. Where this one is rounded. So these are the ones we like. It's hard to get a heart shape out of the squared off ones, which is why I go with the round ones. Now there's some that have the patterns in here, have a little star pattern. Those work just as well. Uh, they do have a little bit longer tines, which makes it a little easier to uh, get a different shape in here. So if there was enough tines, you could really adjust the shape. But because these are small, we're going to just go for the regular. And I'll show you how we do that. Um, you're also going to need a pair of flat nose pliers. Thank you, Shaniqua. I hope I said that right. Um, and a chain or any rope chain, anything will work. And a mallet and safety glasses and a torch. Uh, they make those little butane torches. Those work well too. Um, I'm using some rosin core solder so we don't have to use any extra flux or anything. I have a fire brick. Um, if you have some area where you use your torch, that would be a good place. Um, be safe. Ventilation is good. And I will get this started. So we're going to go glasses first. I'm going to grab my bolt cutters because that's how I cut my pieces. Sorry about the absolute mess. I promise one day this winter I will have all of this done. So what I'm trying to do is keep this rounded spot. So I'm going to cut it right about here. And as always keep the side you want on the side that you're holding. So we cut right about there. And just get that off of there. We'll cut this one. Sometimes if you can't hold it, pinch the little piece that's left over. And if you pinch that, I don't want to install that. <laughs> if you pinch this with your bolt cutters, you have a lot of force and you'll be able to take those pieces off really easily without having to grab another pair of pliers or something. All right, so our next step is actually, we're gonna go grind these and then I'm gonna do the holes and then we can move on to actually getting them set. So this is a fairly quick process. Um, it's just 
you got to follow the steps and makes it easy. Over to wrong way. The belt sander lights. Okay. Whoa, hey, hi there. Another for those of you that don't have the sander, you can take and clamp this in some leather. Just clamp it in your vise. Grab a file. I used this one for something the other day. I forget what it was, but it was not what a file was supposed to be used for. So I just clean that out. Now I can never remember what the names of all the files are. You can use one that just has one side going one direction, or this one which has one going this direction and one cut going this way. But if you're trying to take off, let me just focus. I need you down just a little bit more. So we were just going to take off the corners. It comes right off with the file. Just keep it. Okay, so just a regular file. Whatever you have. It's really hard with these little pencil files. These little guys are super hard. Um, so Harbor Freight has these, a lot of other stores and shops. So let's see, I'm gonna put you guys right here. I will for my holes oh I can't do that yet we don't tap the holes until everything's put together because we don't know how it's going to go together all right so we do know try and find a spot that I can mark have you right there okay so we want this to have enough of the tines to fold over to look cool and have some function so here's what I generally do I try and make it to where I have at least enough of this to curl over so it might not go all the way to this tine but it's going to go do, do, do. there we go now you can see what I'm doing okay so this time I want to get over enough to get over this one but it doesn't necessarily have to go that far the important part here 
is that both of these faces, you can see how the bowls, or not bowls, how the fork was shaped. There you go. This is the bowl. We want this to be the top. Normally on the bottom of silver plate, you get these worn off spots. We want those in the back. Um, before I forget, real quick, um, I'm just gonna put my mark on this guy. Not that one. <laughs> And that should be good. I can't see. Yep, we're good. Next time I'm getting a stamp that's bigger than that. Okay, so here we go. Front to front. We have two sides here that we need to get in a heart shape. One of these is coming up, the other one is going down. So we want to make sure that we've got this set in the direction that we want it to go. So I want it right about there. I think that would be good. I'm going to pinch it right here. Take a marker. I like these um, Sharpie fine point permanent markers and I'm going to go just right across the tines and make my marks. That's the bend mark. Now we're going to pinch it, flip it over, pinch it again so it doesn't really move. Oh, it moved on me. Right there. And we're going to do the back side of this fork. Okay, so double checking that. Flip it over. That's right there. That's right there. Okay, that should be good. So we have one side that's that way and one side same direction doesn't have anything thank you diane so now the back side here has a mark and the front side here has a mark so we're going to grab this with our flat nose pliers right down to the line and i'm going to fold it all the way up and i'm going to go over just a little bit and I'm pretty sure these are going to break. There, they, I didn't feel any crunches, but they just look like they're super sharp. Like that bend just is really sharp. And it doesn't feel like they're broken. See what it looks like. Yeah, they're broken. Yep. So we can't use these. I did have some backups. Who do I got in here? Nope. I'll be right back. I gotta go dig through my piles of silverware. Oh, hearts. Nope, those are cornered. I need two forks. Here, fork, fork, fork.
I found some volunteers. All right. So now we have some volunteers. These are the ones I was explaining with the little pattern up top. Uh, they always make them look a little interesting. Let me unzoom you here. And let's do the same thing we just did again. So if you're making a bunch of these, you can do all these pieces all in the same same uh, time. Just do all of the steps. And I'm going to show you guys. what I'm doing here. So I've cut this. So I've cut it. Now I'm going to grab just that piece and yeah, you guys can see me bending it. So much easier to get that piece off of there. So I do the same thing to this one. If I had to take this one and take a pair of pliers and I get right up to the line and then fold them over so you can do it that way too so those guys go there this guy goes back to his home these guys will most likely become dogs now speaking of dogs this is my first ever dog Uh, I made this guy seven years ago and I was soldering I was soldering on the jump rings on the back and I think over the years this one I just kind of figured it to be a doe deer and I found it in the drawer where I got these guys I just thought I'd show that off blast from the past all right so we have to get these guys hi sophie thanks for joining me hi sandy um, we're gonna do the same thing we're gonna go to the belt sander and get these round Actually, before I finish this one, I'll just show you guys how to do it in the vise. Where'd my leather go? There it is. All right, so I have a really sharp edge. Stop it from zooming on you. Or, yeah, zooming in and out. So I've got my edge. I have corners here. I'm going to knock those guys off. Just kind of round it over the top. This was the procedure before the belt sander. Let's try to take off the sharp edges. We'll take our little sander here, our Dremel tool. This is actually a nail Dremel. I got it when I was doing my wife's nails, <laughs> gel nails. We're just going to round this off.
smooth edges. No more sharp stuff. All right, so now we're back to going where we want with that. Let me unzoom you. Okay, so we're coming back to this point. I'm gonna flatten these out just a touch. It's kind of really rounded here. So this is a piece of brown board paneling. It just keeps it from getting the marks. There's, there's no marks from hammering it into the anvil and you still get a nice flat surface. So we're gonna take these Back to our marker. Whenever I do these, I like to keep the star. So I'm gonna make this just right about there. There. <laughs> and we're again we're gonna pinch it here. And I'm gonna do these times. Mark. Pinch it here, pinch it here. Try not to let it move on you. Marky, marky, marky. All right. And there's the lid. So our faces one has a mark, the other one doesn't. That's the mark there. So we want to bend these on the side of the mark going t towards the mark. So we have the mark here. I'm going to put this right down to the line and I'm going to bend it right over. I'm not going all the way over. I'm leaving some room in there. And you want to bend it at the angle so your pliers should be straight with that if you go this way they're going to angle at a different direction so i'm just going up real quick and we'll finish bringing those over they just need to be over enough so that we can hammer on them. Okay, so there we go. Same thing here. And these are bending a lot better. Okay, so we're far enough over to be able to hammer down. Now we have our, our top and our top. Nope, this is our top. And they're gonna look just like that. So here's what I like to do. I like to take this over here and I'm just going to lightly tap these down. Do the same with the other one. Okay, we're going to put these guys together. 
make sure you have the front sides front. And I'm going to take and push these cor this corner here together. I'm going to try and keep the corner together. And then I'm just going to move up the tines. Watch your fingers here. Flip it over. You always want to make sure that you're pushing this into each other because it still wants it still wants to slide. These are silver plate. 90% um, of what I do is all silver plate. So you can kind of see how this bends over or keeps wanting to slide out of place. So this is the side we need. We're going to push this tight again. And again. <laughs> So, oops. still wanting to come apart. So now what I'm doing is I'm looking at the height of the tines. And I'm going to go in and just kind of bend them down a little bit with my pliers. So this guy, I can go down a little bit there. Yep, so that one's going to be, that one's almost touching this next time. These guys are all pretty flush. So here's what we do now. I'm going to take a pair of forceps. Oh, I've still got solder in there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab... I'm going to grab right here with these. So I want my pieces together and that's center. So this is where everything should end up. It should end up looking like this. So here's what we're going to do now. Now we're going to solder. You can do this a couple of ways. We're basic, actually, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm going to hammer this really hard. Make sure things are back in place. There we go. It's been a couple days since I made this. So that's actually kind of tight now. Now we'll, f we'll get these together. I can feel it slide just a little bit. Right in the middle. Just two. We'll get our soldering station here and it's easier for me to sweat solder these which is just getting this hot and then touching the metal to it but you can also take and take some pliers and flatten these guys out Then you can take and cut them and you can put them in place. So 
we'll make a couple of little tabs here. And we're just going to take these work, just a little pair of tweezers. And I always want one down here in the front, down on the end. I always really want to make sure that this end is as tight as I can get it. So you see how I use the tools, those little pliers to pull this in. Let me shut off the autofocus. Okay, so I have one little piece there. That piece is gonna bond these two pieces together. So our next one I'm going to put a little further up. Um, okay. Yep, yeah, we're actually going to flip this over. Actually, we can't on the first one. So let's solder this first one in place and then we'll flip it over. The reason I want to solder on the back side is any excess solder will just flow down and it won't get on our forward facing side. So we'll do this. Those guys out of the way. And the way this is leaning it's leaning to where the solder is going to go down that way. Uh, lighter. So this is just a regular torch. Turn the laptop a little bit. Just kind of heating the whole piece up for this low temp solder you don't have to but it normally solders a lot better if both of your parts are hot and right there it's through put that down there and I'm going to quench this in my bucket of water so I don't burn myself when I grab it because I forgot that it was hot. True story. Happens a lot. Okay, so essentially right now our, our heart is together. So it's not moving anymore. So we're going to flip this over, still clipping it in the middle here, so we have control of it. And <laughs> that's funny. My stamp mark, I covered up. <laughs> so I always try and get one up here towards the top. And depending on how that goes. I might put one here in the middle also. So we'll see this. This looks like they're touching really well. Um, whenever I hit it really hard, part of that was to make sure that these tines are touching each other. So you get a nice good contact. So let's get this guy in there. I think this one might only need two. If I can zoom you guys in here to what I'm seeing. So that's our little piece of solder. Right there's our solder. The angle is facing down. So I don't really need to do a whole lot.
and you're gonna see this melt twice well I call it twice it's kind of like it starts to melt whenever it bubbles up so right there it just bubbled up what we're looking for is we want it to flow so it's starting to drop here in a second you'll see it start to disappear and there it disappeared so now it's just a little mark we're going to take this and quench it yeah that made a good connection so trying to pull it apart and it's not coming apart so we're going to go ahead and finish tapping this down I don't like sharp things so I try and get these tines to either hook in or I'm going to grind off the, the points where's Gus Gus? Gus! he might be taking a nap so I'm going to take my mallet and I'm just trying to hit these down so they're nice and flat up against the other tines. Same thing here. And one thing to mention, if this is going to come apart, it's going to come apart right now whenever you're hammering those pieces down. Um, that's really going to test your solder joints and this isn't moving or going anywhere so I'm okay with this um, that one I want down just a little bit more there we go I also try to get it to where stuff's not going to catch underneath it okay so again we're going to our sanding drum A little fast. And I'm just taking off these tips. Try not to scratch up here. I'm just feeling for sharp spots and this isn't super critical because if you're going to tumble these those sharp spots will will get taken out normally um, I just like to help it out to where I don't feel any sharp spots and that whenever it goes in the tumbler I know that it's coming out without any sharp spots. Gus Gus! Alright, so there is our heart. Now we're going to take and uh, put our holes in here so this is going on a necklace I want my jump rings to be at the highest point of this guy here so I'm going to put one right here I'll put one right here put one right here just try to make sure they're they're even all right let's punch this and 
And because we're using the 10 millimeter rings, we have some extra room that if you don't want to get too close to the edge, this no problem. And a little tap. Tap, tap a root. Go back there. I'm going to drill some holes. Move the light. This is a 1 16th inch bit, so it's very small. So you don't want to really force down on your bits. And whenever you feel them, kind of stop grabbing. Just give it a little bit more wax. Slow, steady pressure. Get that coil off of there. That leaves us with, hi. <laughs> that leaves us with these guys. We have these burrs back here. So once again to our drum sander. Thank you, Diane. Thank you, Sandy. Barely touch the sander, the drum to the hole because it's gonna, it will leave a mark. I just rub my finger over it until I don't feel that spot anymore. Go on to the next one. And I always go through with the little 1 16th inch diamond bit. Go in from the back, in case you accidentally touch it, you leave a mark on the back. All right, nothing sharp. I'm gonna put on this guy. And I'm actually going to just buff this up a little bit. Let me unzoom you here. Did it zoom? Okay. Um, so this, I use my red compound. This really fluffy one, I use my white compound. And I'm going to hold my breath for this. Normally, I will use my mask. Let's see if I can get that camera back on. didn't come back. Bring it back. Running two cameras. Um, I thought That's crazy.
want this. Yeah, the only bad part about that is it, uh, it doesn't zoom. But I can, let's do this. I'll make this guy big. And I can point the laptop down. So I'm using my buffers. And like I said, I'm going to hold my breath. I'm going to polish this up a little bit. And we'll get um, our jump rings on there. this stuff I try not to mix the compounds as much as I can all right let's make it shiny and shiny we'll grab our jump rings one two I like to put these together with my curved nose pliers Here's the other one so I like to use the back side here I'm just going to open it up using the backs, not the points. Just get it right in there. I do it this way because it keeps it more evenly uh, shaped. Sometimes you can, you'll just bend the tip or you'll bend a piece of it. So I have a little gap there. I'm going to make sure as I wiggle, I go past each other and you want to hear a little click so there's one Get the second one on there and now we'll put our necklace through here this is one of my old sterling bracelets, or not bracelets, my old sterling, uh, AKA sterling silver necklaces. They say 925 on them, but the magnets like them. So they are not <laughs> 925. So this is our backside and this is our front. So two little solder spots. Sometimes I do three and I'll go through and punch this. And from here, it will actually go into the tumbler. And I can set the tumbler 45 minutes to an hour and uh, this will be nice, bright, shiny, everything smooth. Do I have that in here? Nope, it's still in the bathroom. I have my tumbler in the bathroom. Yes, that, that should work. It probably, 
Um, I think I have one here somewhere. Um, you just kind of push it down and pop it. Uh, that should be enough because you just need to grab enough for the bit to grab. That's not a bit. I have like drill bits everywhere up here and I keep pulling out pieces that aren't. So the tip on here, that's the shiny part at the end. That just needs to have just enough of a dent to be able to uh, grab and start the cut. Thank you. So that is how we make these. So I'll just put my stamp on there now and I was gonna go what was I gonna do oh I had a special request video that I got to record but I got to get that camera fixed so we will have a video coming out um, I'll try and get it done tonight so we can have it posted tomorrow uh, once I get my camera figured out so let's stamp this guy So now I have my little touch mark and I don't give these guys born on dates like I do the cats and the dogs and all the other animals. They get born dates and this one, I keep looking for my tumbler, but it's not in here. Okay, so do you guys have any questions? Thank you. Uh, make sure if you haven't yet, um, go to the short that you need to comment on for a chance to win this guy. And then that's the bottom. This little piece right here was the key to making this uh, really nice. Everything's nice and flat. It's actually got a little bit of a raise in the center. Which is, is perfect. It, it looks great. I mean, it's going to be sitting like this, so it's going to look nice. But make sure you leave a comment. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. Um, and, uh, but at least leave a comment. That way you guys have a chance to win this guy. And that, I think I just put a short out, is gonna be next Wednesday. So Wednesday the 22nd of December, 2021. Um, this could be on here for a while, so. <laughs> uh, Seminole, Florida. Sandy. Oh, okay. Did you need something, honey? All right. So I'm going to say goodbye. Thank you guys so much for joining me. Tampa. We have some friends in... Uh, Orange County, some friends in Mims, Florida, um, family, and Hollywood, I think. I don't know. They're spread around down there all, all over the place. All right. I'll see you guys again. Um, like I said, I'll try and get this video done tonight. Um, it's going to be a really cool bracelet. So I will see you. Uh, tomorrow.